Sea. Now, one of the world's most famous roller coasters is closing for a major revamp this weekend after nearly 30 years. <laughs> It is Nemesis at Alton Towers and it first opened back in 1994. It was the first inverted roller coaster in Europe with riders sitting beneath the tracks rather than on top of them. Roller coaster fans say it is still one of the best in the world. After its last ride on Sunday, Nemesis now won't open again until 2024. Delighted to say John Wardley, who designed the ride, as well as many other world famous roller coasters, joins us now. Afternoon, John. Hello, Claire. How are you? I'm very well. Listen, you've you've created history. How on earth did you come up with the idea of inverting a roller coaster ride? Well, we wanted to do something a bit different at Alton Towers. Alton Towers is noted for not actually doing things the way everyone else does it. You know, everybody thinks of a roller coaster as being built on a flat level site and you just throw a load of steel up in the air and a roller coaster is all about height. Well, we wanted to do something different. We wanted to create something that challenged people to make them make them test their what they dare and dare not do. And so we wanted to do something very different. And the idea of having your feet dangling. And instead of just interacting with the sky, we thought well, if you could interact with rock and water and, and put the thing down in the ground rather than up in the air. So Nemesis came about and um, I was the very first person to ride it when we were testing it. It ran for about uh, a week with sandbags in the trains. And then after it had gone well, many hundreds of laps just with sandbags, the Swiss engineer said to me, well, well, John, this was your idea, so we'll take some sandbags out and you better get on and around you go. And that's what happened. And little did I realise... Were you on your own, yes. John? Uh, little did, did, did anyone realise that, that 45 million people were going to follow me over the next 28 years. What was that first ride like? It, it was very strange because I just did not know really what to expect. Um, it was unbelievably thrilling. And you felt as if you were on an adventure. You were actually going somewhere and doing something. All the inversions, even though I knew every one of them, every inch of the track, I was still completely disorientated. It was quite extraordinary. And, and um, nowadays, people come up to me and they say, we're really pleased we've we had the we overcame our fear we, you know, we, we they might not want to ride it again <laughs> but you get a great sense of satisfaction having ridden it so um nemesis has now traveled well the cars of the trains have traveled about one and a half million miles in their lifetime and we decided that we nemesis needed needed a bit of tlc and and so nemesis is closing on sunday night and i have the honor of taking the very last ride um which which will be great i took the first ride and i'm going to be taking the last ride and it'll be closing through next year and then opening again in in 2024 as um well it'll be the same nemesis that everybody wants because when people heard that we were closing it they said don't close nemesis we love it too much well we're, we're not changing the thrill and the and the excitement of the ride but a few surprises are being added to it well, that sounds great will you be on your own again as you were for the first ride no, I won't actually. They opened a ballot. There were so many people wanted to join me on that last ride that Alton Towers opened a ballot and within uh, 20, 20 minutes of it going online, they'd had 15,000 applicants. So um, 14 lucky people together with their partners are going to be joining me at about 10 o'clock on Sunday night. You're going to be there for a very long time. They're all going to want to speak to you, John. That's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking at the trajectory of your career. You started in theatre stage management and, and film special effects. How on earth did you make the leap from that to what you do now? Well, when I was working in, in films, and I, I was working on some quite big films, you know, some of the Bond films, and whenever we had any any guests or visitors come onto the film sets, they were absolutely amazed by the the, the effects and the illusions and, and the, the sheer scale of what we were doing. And I thought it's such a shame that, that this has to be filmed and dubbed and edited and eventually projected on a flat cinema screen. If only we could bring the live audience 
to what we were doing. And then I thought, well, that must be what theme parks are all about. And this was, of course, way back in the 70s when no one in Britain knew what a theme park was. So I jumped on a plane. I went to Disneyland and I thought Britain deserves some of this. Um, and when the time was right, I was fortunate enough to be on the ground floor of of, of creating theme parks in Britain and You've... then subsequently on the continent. Well, listen, and yeah, there's, we haven't got much time. I've talked to you for hours. What else have you done then? So Nemesis um, was the first, but you've gone on to do many other rides, haven't you? Many other theme well, parks. At, yes, at, at Alton Towers, after Nemesis, we we did Oblivion, which was which is the vertical drop ride that drops into a great hole in the ground. And then after that, I thought, well, Nemesis and Oblivion are the sort of villains. So let's create a hero, something that enables you to do what you want to do. So Air was created, which was the first flying coaster where you can actually fly in a sort of Superman flying position beneath the track. Um, so we did that. And then subsequently there was there was Rita and and uh, and the, the, the last ride. Although, of course, I retired many years ago, but they keep dragging me back. They won't let me go. Um, so there was Wicker Man, which was the the uh, the big wooden roller coaster, a um, couple of years back. And then there are lots of plans in the pipeline for a big new ride to come along after Nemesis opens in 2024. How does it leave you feeling that you you've brought so many millions of people? So much. I mean, all right, it could be like a minute and a half of joy, but you you brought them that joy. And as you say, the the kind of overcoming of fear, because I did Space Mountain uh, in Disneyland and, you know, I'm not a big fan of them, but I I, I totally agree with what you're saying, that you get this sense of, I did that when you get off it. Yes. Well, you you see, Claire, not everybody has got the money or the wherewithal to go whitewater rafting or skydiving or bungee jumping, but everyone can go to a theme park and for a short time, uh, without any training or without any special kit or whatever, they can test their own, you know, what they dare and dare not do. And and people get this enormous sense of satisfaction when they come off the rides. And I, I really enjoy seeing that. People think that, that when you design roller coasters, you must be some kind of sadist that wants to scare the living daylights out of people. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know, I don't want to scare people. I want to give them a good feeling. And Nemesis has given a very good feeling to 45 million people. And hopefully, although... Although Sunday is is the last night of the present nemesis or the last ride, I, I don't regard it as the last of anything. I re- regard it as the next 30 years of nemesis. So it'll be a very exciting time. Nemesis is going to outlive me in 30 years' time, but hopefully it will carry on entertaining people for a long time to come. It certainly will. John, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on 5 Live Drive. Not at all. Thank you for having me. John Wardley there, who designed Nemesis. Uh, he'll be on the final ride, as you just heard, on Sunday, 10 o'clock yeah. at night.